Now, you've heard about the phrase constitutional carry, but did you know that's actually not really an accurate thing to be saying? Hey, folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner and constitutional attorney. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. We really would appreciate it. We know that 25 states right now are constitutional carry states. And we know that soon the state of Florida will be a constitutional carry state, too. Now, what does it mean to be a constitutional carry state? Well, typically, when we talk about constitutional carry, it means that you have a right to carry a loaded handgun on your body for self-defense without a permit, without permission from the government, without a slip of paper that says you have the right to carry that gun. In other jurisdictions, like shall-issue jurisdictions, you have the right to carry a gun, provided that you meet objective criteria. And of course, there are jurisdictions out there called may-issue jurisdictions, which basically say you have to go to the government and go, mother, may I, and beg them for the right to carry, and they basically have the right to blow you off. Uh, but again, that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about is the phrase constitutional carry and why it's actually a misnomer, why it's actually not correct to talk about constitutional carry. And I'll tell you why in just a second. As Americans, you and I do not get our right to keep and bear arms from the Constitution. That is not true. Our rights do not come from the Constitution. They pre-existed the Second Amendment, and they pre-existed the Constitution. That's right. The right to keep and bear arms is a fundamental right that existed before our Constitution was even drafted. The Constitution merely memorializes or codifies an existing right. It did not invent that right. That is why, if you look at the text of the Second Amendment, the text of the Second Amendment says, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, this is a very important distinction that I want you to understand. Because people like Governor Brian Kemp of Georgia, who I applaud for signing uh, Georgia's constitutional carry statute into law. That's great. I'm happy. But I want you to understand one thing, a nuanced thing, but it's important for you to know this. Because in his statement where he signed this constitutional carry law into effect, uh, Governor Kemp of Georgia said that the Constitution of the United States gives us that right, not the government. Now, I applaud the sentiment, but his statement is actually not accurate. I want you to understand why. The real way to talk about constitutional carry is not actually to say constitutional carry, although it's perfectly fine for uh, talking about it in the press or as a passing reference. That's great. But I want you in your mind to be precise. I want you to be the smartest person in the room when it comes to guns in the Second Amendment. That's my goal of this channel. The term permitless carry is really what we're talking about here. And that's because it was always widely understood that the Second Amendment, like the First and the Fourth Amendments, codified a pre-existing right. That's what the Supreme Court said. The very text of the Second Amendment implicitly recognizes the pre-existence of the right and simply declares only that it shall not be infringed. The Supreme Court has said this in several cases, including Heller, as well as a case called United States v. Cruikshank in 1876. Remember, the right to keep and bear arms, as we've talked about in other videos, actually derives from the English right to keep and bear arms. That doesn't mean that our rights here in the United States are dependent upon what the British did or what the English did hundreds of years ago, but that was the original concept which we've talked about in other videos. So the bottom line is, well, I want you to know this, when you talk about constitutional carry, which is the right to carry a handgun for self-defense in public without a permit, that's fine to use the phrase constitutional carry, but in your mind, it's really technically permitless carry and not constitutional carry. Okay, I hope you learned something here today, here at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.